first, let me say thank you to the Chamber and to the Citizen Tribune for hosting this event. Question one asks us to share our top three priorities for next year's budget. Let me give you a little background on the budget process. We actually have three different budgets. We have a first, uh, the first budget would be our food service budget, and it is self-supporting. No local dollars are invested in this budget. However, they do receive funds from the United States uh, Department of Agriculture. The second budget is our federal programs budget, and it's funded by federal dollars, and no local funds are invested in this budget. Third is our general purpose budget, which is funded by state, federal, and local dollars. State and federal dollars fund 70% of this budget, which means only 30% come from local dollars. Let me say it's important to establish your priorities first and then build your budget around those priorities. My number one priority is safety. We want the students to feel safe and secure in their learning environment, and we want parents to know we are doing everything possible to keep their kids safe when they drop them off at school in the mornings. We have buzzard systems in all of our schools, SRO officers in the two high schools, and we also have two SR officers that rotate between the four middle schools. We also have a great working relationship with the police and sheriffs, with the police and sheriff's departments. The officers will do walkthroughs in our elementary schools, and they're invited to have lunch with the students. My second priority would be to re recruit and retain the best teachers and staff that we possibly can. That's why 80% of our budget goes for employee salaries and benefits. My third priority would be capital improvements. West High needs some serious updates in the near future, and we have two middle schools and two elementary schools with an open classroom concept, and we see the open classroom as a serious safety concern. Question two asks about ensuring we have safe facilities and environments conducing to the learning environment. We have a capital improvement plan to address the needs of West High and the schools with open classrooms. Schools with open classrooms have serious safety issues as well as being detrimental to the learning process. It's hard to concentrate when your classroom is being used as a walkway. We need to keep our schools on a renovation schedule so that we don't fall behind. Not too fast that we break the county, but not too slow that we fail to create a positive learning environment. I think it's positive that Dr. Perry, our superintendent, has had multiple experiences with building programs. The third question has to do with technology, and technology is an important part of any instructional program. Strong technology skills are needed for all occupations and career paths, and it's important that we teach those skills. Question number four, how do we maintain effective balance between maintaining high academic standards and extracurricular activities? We have established high academic standards for our students. We want to have a strong focus on academics, but we also want to have a well-balanced student. Some students may excel on the football field, some may excel on the basketball court, or in the band, or forensics team, and this gives them a sense of pride and belonging. I think it's important to put these activities and programs in our budget. And we must remember that a strong education system attracts industry, industries and businesses, and the taxes they pay helps to keep our taxes lower. Therefore, we need to be good stewards of the taxpayer's dollar, and the school board thinks that we are. Thank you, and I'd appreciate your vote.